This video is about adjusting dollar amounts for inflation using the Consumer Price Index. When talking about dollar amounts, inflation means prices that are increasing. Here are my estimates for the price of 20 ounces of Coke in 1973 and in 2013. This is an estimate for 1973 because they actually didn't sell 20 ounces of Coke, they sold them in 10 ounces, and it was about 10 cents for 10 ounces. And in 2013, the prices seemed to vary a bit, somewhere between $1.25 and $1.75, so I chose something easy, $1.50. But it's not really a big problem that the price of Coke has gone up like this, because look at the median household income for those two years. It also has increased quite a bit. So when we're looking at dollar amounts from history, it's important for us to also understand that there's this aspect of inflation that's going on. Is a Coke more affordable now than it was back then? Just because it was a lot lower of a number, what we would call the nominal cost, that it was 20 cents at the register back in 1973, but has it increased a lot higher than the increase of what people are making? Well, if we want to compare these numbers over time, we can use a fraction for comparing them. Let's start with Coke and let's compare the price in 2013 to the price in 1973. So I decided to set up this fraction that will compare the 2013 price in the numerator up top to the 1973 price in the denominator. Comparing the prices of Coke, $1.50 to 20 cents, I see that this fraction equals 7.5. So we can see that the price of Coke in 2013 is 7.5 times higher than what it was in 1973. And we can look at this number as a percent. 7.5 is 750%. So we could also say that the price has increased by 750%. Comparing how the median household income in the United States has increased in these two years, we see that the fraction would equal f about 4.9 or an increase of about 490 percent. So in this 40-year span, both the price of Coke and the median household income have increased, and with these fractions we can see that the relative increase in the price of Coke is greater than the relative increase in the median household income. So is it fair to say that the price of Coke has increased too much? That it should only be about 500 percent more, five times higher, so probably closer to one dollar would be in line with the same kind of increase we see in income? Well, for us to really understand that, we need to think about not just how the price of Coke changes, but how do the prices of so many other things in life change also. Inflation is going to affect almost all of these, so it's important to see how various products and services change in value over time. The U.S. Department of Labor does track the prices of various items over time with the Consumer Price Index. The prices that are tracked in the CPI are not just for items that you buy, but also for services that you purchase. So things that are tracked are food and drink, housing, including furniture, clothing, transportation, including fuel costs, doctor's visits, prescription drugs, eyeglasses, recreation, education and technology, and all sorts of other goods and services. This tracking goes all the way back to the early 1900s. We see some small increases and decreases, and then eventually a drastic upturn that keeps increasing over the last 40 or so years. And instead of working with the actual prices of all these items, an index is created. To create an index, first you have to decide which value is going to be your base value, or in the case of the CPI, which year will be our base year. For this price index, data from 1982 to 1984, right around here on the graph, was averaged and assigned the value of 100, like 100% 100 or one whole. That that is going to be our base value, and all other points are compared back to that point. And just like we used fractions to compare prices of Coke and the change in the median household income, the value of all these goods and services from other years is compared back to that average from 1982 to 84, what we're calling equal to 100 on the index. So that when we see that the index around 1995 is about 150, it means that those prices are about 150 percent of what they were back in the base year around 1983, or one and a half times higher. 
when we see that in the early 2000s, the CPI had gone up to 200, 200 compared back to 100 is a doubling, 200%. So prices in the early 2000s were about double what they were around 1983. And this is how a table of CPI values is created, like this one. It's actually calculated for every single month, so you can see going back to January 1913, the CPI was 9.8, meaning that prices in 1913 were about 9.8% of what they were in the base year, around 1983. We can see that in 1973, the CPI was about 42 to 44 or 45, and by 2013, the CPI was over 230. So prices in the year 2013 are about 230% or 2.3 times more what they were in the base year around 1983. So now let's go back to that increasing price of Coke and the increasing median household income, but we'll also look at how the CPI changed from 1973 to 2013. The CPI for 2013 we don't have the value for the month of December yet, so we don't have a yearly average. We'll estimate and just go with 232. And back in 1973, the average for that year was 44.4. I made some space at the bottom of the page here to write down the CPI from 1973 and 2013. And now we can use a fraction to compare the change in these two numbers. Dividing out this fraction gives 5.23, or 523%. So the change in the CPI, which remember represents the, the average or the summary of a, a wide variety of goods and services, was an increase of 523%, or 5.23 times bigger. We can see that median household incomes, which grew only by 490%, didn't increase quite as much as the CPI did. And Coke increased by more than what the CPI did. So the CPI cannot predict exactly how prices will increase due to inflation, but it gives us a very good indicator of how they do increase. So let's take a look at two quick examples to show how we can use the CPI to adjust dollars for inflation. For our first example, let's use an automobile. A base model 1973 Pontiac Grand Prix had a price of $4,919. What would this be in 2013 dollars? So a car that costs less than $5,000 brand new seems like a pretty low number, but we know how prices have just increased over time due to inflation, so what would this be in 2013 dollars? To do this calculation, we do need those CPI figures, and the mathematics that we'll use comes from saying that the change in the CPI is going to be proportional to the change in the price. If you've worked with proportions before, you know that there are going to be a variety of ways that we can set them up. So we could do it like the change in CPI going from 44.4 up to 232 should be proportional to the change in dollar amounts. 4,919 to what price? Another option would be for us to compare the price of an item to the CPI from that year. So we could say a $4,919 car back when the CPI was only 44.4 would turn into how many dollars now that the CPI is up to 232? And there are even a couple of other arrangements of proportions that would work because they all end up doing the same operation. We know that to find x, we'll need to multiply 232 times 4,919 and divide by 44.4. Both of these proportions should give us the same figure. It's approximately $25,703. So that new car that cost less than $5,000 really wasn't that cheap after all, because if we take into account the inflation of that price, it would be like a brand new $25,700 car. And that's pretty common with what we have today. And for our next example, in August 1988, a Nintendo video game system with two controllers, zapper gun, and the Super Mario Bros. Duck Hunt game cartridge cost $149.99 retail. 
How does this compare to today's game systems? Since this price is more than 25 years old, we really need to adjust for inflation to get a good sense of what that price really is. We'll still use 232 as the CPI for the year 2013, but we need to know what the CPI was back in August 1988. Going back to this website from the Department of Labor, this website is the Bureau of Labor Statistics, which has a ton of great quantities and information, but it also has the CPI index in this link, CPI Tables. And we can see that the CPI in August 1988 was 119. So now that we have the CPI information, I'll let you tackle the proportion of this problem. Right now, try it, and then you can restart the video and check your answer. So pause it and try this proportion. Okay, remember that there are going to be a few different arrangements of proportions that will all do the trick here, so different setups could work. You could have done something like the $149.99 cost was back when the CPI was 119. So proportionally, that would mean how many dollars now that the CPI is increased to 232. A different setup could have been, well, the CPI grew from 119 up to 232. So proportional growth would mean $149.99 price would increase to how many dollars? And there are a couple of other arrangements that would work, but they all involve the same operations. The ones that you can see here, multiplying 232 by the 149.99 and dividing by 119. Same deal back here. It's going to be a multiply by 232 with the 149.99 and a divide by 119. However you set up your proportion, you'll know it's accurate if you get to this price of about $292.42. So when we adjust that price for inflation, we can see an amount that's still a little bit smaller than some of today's video game systems, but close to $300. Definitely not like a $150 game system. That may have been that nominal price back in 1988, but that would be more like around $300 in today's dollars when you've adjusted for inflation.